watching SCU's Science News, coming to you from Santa Clara, California. I'm Kayla Coffey. A series of alarming finds have been brought to our attention here in the newsroom. The European green crab has invaded the San Francisco Bay estuary. Here's Jesse Walsh with more on the story. Thank you, Kayla. The Carcinus manus, better known as the European green crab, is an introduced species to the estuary here in San Francisco Bay. It's become quite a problem for local industry as well as for the native species. The green crab originally occupied the European and North African coasts. The early 1900s brought this species to the East Coast where they thrived. The first European green crab was not documented in the San Francisco Bay until 1989. Today this extremely versatile species can be found on the coasts of South America, Australia, South Africa, and North Pacific Asia. Joining us now in the studio is zoologist Gabrielle Lucy with more on the story. Good evening, Gabrielle. Good evening, Jesse. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming. Let's start out with, how do you tell this particular species apart from other species of crab? That is a great question, Jesse. There are actually numerous ways that you can tell the species of crab apart from other types of crabs. In particular, their color can range from red to green to brown. In addition, you can tell them apart by the five spines on either sides of their eyes. Is there a reason they are that color? Actually, yes. They usually are dark in color and look blotchy from the top. This is actually an adaptation. This way, when predators look down at the ocean floor, the crabs can blend in. Thanks for all that great information, Miss Lucy. Now, the question I know you're all asking, why are these crabs so successful? Well, there are a few reasons. First, they have an extremely high reproductive rate. Yes, they can lay up to 200,000 eggs per year. Also, they have a very high dispersal rate, as well as a rapid growth rate and a very broad diet. But most importantly, they have an extremely broad habitat, temperature, and salinity tolerance. This is the reason why they are so successful all over the world. The European green crab was introduced to the Elkhorn Slough through ballast water, a process where ships take on water at the port of origin and release it at their destination. Along with the water released are many different kinds of fish, algae, plankton, and crustaceans. When the ballast water is released, there are many larvae and eggs suspended in that water. Larvae can remain suspended in the water for up to 80 days. The currents were the most likely cause of the spread of this invasive species north. The larvae then hatched and invaded the Oregon and Washington coasts. Professor Sarah Wright will tell us more. Good evening, Jesse. The invasion of the European green crab is a larger issue than you may realize. On the east coast, the invasion has been displacing the red rock crab. Here we have been seeing a similar problem. However, we have been seeing the problem with the mud crab. According to this graph, the mud crab population has been rapidly decreasing to near extinction, while the European green crab population has been rapidly increasing. As you can see, the destruction of native species is a huge problem. Back to you in the studio. A University of Auckland affiliated research group claims that the European green crab is one of the world's 100 most invasive species. The only way to save our native estuary is to prevent invasive species from taking over. Scientists and ecologists today are catching the European green crab and removing it from the estuary habitats. These efforts seem to be making a difference. Native mud crabs have been making a comeback thanks to the efforts of these scientists. In our own study, the Santa Clara University Bio 5 class visited Elkhorn Slough to see firsthand the extent of this invasion. We pulled in five traps and found that all of them contained European green crabs. In the book, Changes in a California Estuary, specialists state that the only way to rectify this problem is regulations combined with public education. This way, we can prevent community and food web disturbance. This has been an SCU Science News Update. Thank you and good night. Good. 
Good evening, Jesse. Good evening, Jesse. The certain day, but it's with the not occurring. Good evening, Jesse. In the bay. However, here it's been the med. <laughs> Good evening, Jesse. <laughs> I'm gonna go outside. <laughs> East Coast is then this way. <laughs> bay. But here it's been the mud. I can't say that. I can't say that. Why? Mud crab. The mud crab. Mud crab. <laughs> Same phenomenon. <laughs> God damn it. It's like another word for phenomenon. What's another word, word for phenomenon? Is that, is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> You're a pee and uh, Are you recording this? <laughs> Great. Okay. I'm Kayla Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it has invaded the San Francisco Bay Estuary, people. It's the car synonymous. Nemo, take care of this problem. <laughs>